In this class, we will learn how to test this function right from the Azure portal. Now, if you see the options over here in the top, we will have this option that is test slash run. So, we can click on this button over here or the option. It will open the testing wizard on the right side. Like here, it will ask the key which we have to use in order to invoke the function. So, we can invoke this function with the help of the function key. We can invoke this with the host key and by default, it is the host key itself. Master key is the admin level key with the help of which we can invoke any function or manage any function in the functions app. We should be very careful so that we don't share this key with any client applications. This should be residing only with the admin of your Azure portal. In the real or the production scenario, you won't be sharing this host key. Either you will share the functions key and there are other methods how the users can authenticate or the applications can authenticate if they want to interact with the functions. We will see in detail how the applications will authorize as well as the authenticate any request when they make a call to these functions with the help of access keys. So, if you want, you can just change this to function key and you can just test. Click on this run. So we had not selected this application inside, so we won't get any details over here. If you have selected the application inside for monitoring purpose, you can see the logs over here. So I will go for this file system logs and run this again. We are getting a message that is hello Azure, this HTTP trigger function executed successfully. This we got because in the input we had sent the name parameter over here that is the Azure. In the code, it is checking whether the name parameter is there or not. If there is a name parameter, then it is typing hello and the name whatever we have passed and this message. Now, if you see, it has typed the information over here. It is because of this context. So, context is the first argument when we create a function in Azure. So, this is the first argument. Next comes the input request binding name. So, with the help of context, we can extract the metadata of the functions at runtime. We can make use of this context argument in order to log the details over here in the application inside as well as in the file system log. So, whatever message you have provided, it is showing over here. You can even log the context variable itself over here in the file system log for the application insights that is context dot log and then we can write the context itself over here. Done. Put the semicolon. If you see over here, whenever you modify, you have to save your code. So, once you click on the save, then only you run. Else, whatever was previously saved, that only will execute and type over here. So, I will clear the logs. Let me just close this and clear the log. And once again, click on this test and run. Go to input. This time, we won't provide any name. Rather, we will just click on this run. So, this time, it should come to this conditional otherwise case that this HTTP function executed successfully but without the name. So, here if you see the response that is telling this HTTP trigger function executed successfully but pass the name in the query string. So, we didn't pass any name over here while passing. Suppose if you are selecting this get and adding the parameter, here if you see it is searching for the query parameter that is name. If there is no query parameter, it is searching for it in the body. Now, I will add the name over here and I will enter venum learning. So, before hitting on run, we will see the log of the previous run. So, here if you see, first we had typed this JavaScript HTTP trigger function, some message and then we had tried to log the context itself. Now, here if you see, it will have the invocation ID. This is the unique runtime invocation ID for your function. Then any attributes, if there is, it will show over here. Then it will have a element over here with the name of execution context. It will have the details on binding, like what was the method used, that is the post, what was the URL used. So, this code is the authorization key. We had selected the master key over here. So, if you want, you can change the to the function key and the function key, it will show over here. What is the original URL? What were the header? If there is any header, it will show over here. And in the case of the body, it will have the body parameter. Now, we will test this with the HTTP method get and we will make use of this functions key and the name we are passing as a query. Click on run. We are getting a message, hello, binam learning as we had selected this HTTP method as get. Our function is capable of processing the request in get as well as post. So, in this code, boilerplate code, what Microsoft has generated, they are not validating the HTTP methods. So, they are handling the request with the help of this conditional operator and checking for the name and executing. But in the real life or the actual use case, you will check this HTTP method. Suppose if you have function, you are designing to handle request with various HTTP methods. Now, if you see the log over here, our query parameter, whatever we had passed over here, it is sent in the URL. If you see over here, the BNUM learning name put in the query parameter. Also, there is a query parameter over here with the help of which we can extract the name. If there is any value, we can just pull out from here. So, like this, we can test the functions within the Azure portal without the need of using the postman or any other clients.